Both women and men feel repelled by needy partners. And while there are obvious signs that feel needy in nature, there are others that are much harder to spot but can still ruin your chances with a guy and lower your value and your worth in his eyes. So today, I'm going to reveal the seven top mistraits that make women feel needy to men so you can avoid them and in doing so, radically increase your chances of him pursuing you, choosing you, and committing to you for life. I think we can all agree that the feeling of neediness is not something fun to experience in a relationship. And if you've ever been the recipient of a guy who is needy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The challenging thing about this is neediness is not black and white. And while I promise not to talk about excessive forms of neediness that we can all agree are not working for women, like you may text the guy multiple times when you don't get an answer from him, that feels needy. You're possessive or jealous of him, that's needy. You always need him to validate you even in times where it's not needed, that's needy. But I'm talking about other times where you might be subconsciously doing things to meet your needs that are going against you because they feel heavy and they put an undue burden on him to try to figure something out that could be more clearly figured out with your participation and help. In this culture, we tend to polarize things. So we often talk about, in one end of the spectrum, complete neediness. And on the other side of the spectrum, we talk about fierce independence. I'm talking about somewhere in between right now because the misconception that if you have needs, you're needy is plain wrong or that you, if you have to meet some of your needs through a relationship that you're needy, that's plain wrong. That's how human beings have evolved through millennia. So having needs is not being needy. Needing to meet some of your needs through a relationship is not needy. Expressing your needs in an indirect way that puts pressure on the guy to do things he doesn't want to do or that remove the feeling of livelihood from him, that's the feeling of neediness. The first overlooked trait that makes men feel neediness from women is a stance or a mindset. Let me go deeper into this. It's called the sun will shine with love. And here's what I mean by that. If you have secretly bought into this myth that life can be sucky and life can be gray and life can be a little bit boring, life can lack meaning, but when the guy arrives, the sun will shine if you've bought into any form at any extreme of this bullshit, then you're going to put more of a pressure on the guy to fix things and feel voids that are not his to feel. Now, don't get me wrong. There's something beautiful and passionate and amazing about relationship that in ways you can't create on your own. Otherwise, you wouldn't go into the pain of being in a relationship. But when you take the active stance of understanding that a relationship is going to magnify what already exists, if you have mediocrity in your life, it's going to be magnified. If you have pain in your life, it's going to be magnified. If you have greatness in your life, it's going to be magnified. So I'm not asking you to stop connecting with guys until you figure out yourself. I'm asking you parallel to you connecting with guys that you fill the gaps of where you feel right now is lacking right now in meaning, in expressiveness, in joy, in passion, in excitement, in movement, so that you A, can attract a higher caliber of guy and B, you don't put undue burdens on him to feel voids that are not his to feel. Second missed trait that creates a feeling of neediness in men is excessive agreeableness. When you don't have the clarity or the courage to express your needs, especially when you disagree with them, because you are either making yourself a little bit more vanilla or you want him to think that you're more connected or more compatible than you already are, or because you think he's great, you haven't found a guy who's as awesome as him, so you don't want to rock the boat. When you are excessively agreeable with him, there's a part of him that's going to recognize this is not true. And when he recognizes that, he's going to have a little radar that says, there's a hidden agenda in this woman, and I'm starting to feel used. And the feeling of being used is highly convertible to feeling neediness from you. Imagine, for example, that you go back in time to the 1990s when people used to go to malls to buy clothes. Kidding. But... That was much more so than now where people buy stuff online. So imagine you go to the mall in the 90s and you enter a store and a person is extra nice to you in a way that doesn't feel authentic. There's a part of you, a red flag that rises that says, this person's being extra nice with me because they want to sell me something. Obviously, you're not trying to sell him something, but you're trying to insert your idea of a relationship into his being. So the clear ask for me to you right now is that you are from the beginning clear about what you want 
what you love, what you hate, what you don't like, so that he can make a better decision for himself that A, gives him more trust in you, and B, doesn't raise this flag that there's something hidden in your experience that makes him feel slightly used. Third missed trait that makes men feel neediness from women is indirect communication. Here's what I mean by that. When there's a secret need to validate yourself, a secret need to feel his pursuit, a secret need to feel if he's really interested in me, and instead of expressing what you want, whether it's emotions, ideas, or thoughts, you make it harder for him to get there. You say things in between the lines, you're slightly passive aggressive, talk in circles, and he has to work extra hard to understand something that could have been communicated in a few sentences. If you have more clarity or more courage, then he's feeling the need to go extra mile of doing work that's unnecessary. I'm the first proponent that there's things that a guy's gonna have to work for that are going to be challenging and they're going to be taxing on his being, but they're for a good cause and you're not doing some fake version of that. For example, the guy wants to have sex with you. He's going to have to work hard at it. Why? Because you want to make sure that you're compatible. You want to make sure you're in a relationship. You want to make sure that there's areas of emotional connection. So that's an area where he has to work hard for something that is clearly defined by both of you. But when he has to work hard for something that is unnecessary, that's the feeling of neediness. That's a feeling of high maintenance that is similar, again, to neediness. The fourth trait that makes guys feel neediness from women without them understanding or knowing so is the stance that the glass is half empty. So it's a view of life. Imagine that you have, out of pain in your life and out of wanting to prevent heartbreak, assumed a position in life where you are looking mostly at what's not possible and what is negative and the gloom and doom scenario, and you're expressing it clearly. If it's a guy who's optimistic, and I'm not talking about toxic positivity because that also is not great. But when a guy has more of a, I want to solve things and I want a vision that's better than the past for the future, and constantly he gets the feeling from someone that is really sad or is always looking at what's not good, always looking at what's missing, then that's such a feeling of sucking the life out of you which goes beyond neediness. It's a thing that at some point he's going to attempt to maybe make it better and share ideas that uplift the other person. At a certain point, he's going to give up and say, this is too heavy, this is too hard. Now, before I go into my last three traits that women often miss, which are really important to consider, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're unclear or unaware of the blind spots that are keeping you single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine to help them to attract the love of their life. And in doing so, I've created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in about 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and a custom report is going to share, based on your specific blind spot, what's the one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you've been on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the fifth trait that makes men feel neediness from women is what I call body image fishing. It's where you feel insecure about your body, which is understandable, and we all have body image issues at some level or another. But when you have that, and instead of being clear and direct and saying, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about me? Or I'm feeling a little insecure right now. Can you tell me? That's clear communication, right? You say something that degrades you or puts you down. Like, ah, I look horrible in this. Or I am so fat. Or I look so fill in the blank. Whenever you do that consistently, every now and then we can all do that. But when you do that consistently and he's trying to help you fill that void, fill that gap with positivity, clearly finds you attractive. He clearly finds you sexy. And, and you're not really buying into it, that's a heavy feeling. That's excessive validation on an area that not only will put you down in a bad light, but it's going to make him feel like potentially you don't value yourself as much. If you don't value yourself as much, why should he? Now, the sixth trait that makes men feel excessive needs from women is lack of clear boundaries. Now, you might be saying, you've lost me to this point. I mean, many boundaries make men feel you're needy. Well, excessive boundaries can do that trick as well. But when you don't have clear boundaries and you don't enforce your boundaries, here's why this is excessive neediness for him. Because 
thinks will not be happy when he fails to meet your boundaries either because he didn't express them because he didn't hold up for them, you're going to have a response, the late response that's going to punch him in some way. That could be passive aggressiveness. That could be maybe distancing yourself without really expressing it. That might mean being unkind to him or, or being unhappy and he not being able to get the sense of what's really going on with you. So when you lack definition and boundaries, you're going to make him work for it. You're going to make him pay. You're going to create an unnecessary drama in some way that's going to punch him in the heart and make him feel a sense of undue pressure without knowing exactly what to do about it. The last one that I'm going to share today is what I call the de facto boyfriend stance. What does that mean? That means that you find a guy attractive and instead of continuing to date until you really validate that the guy is the guy who he claims himself to be or that you have theorized he is, you make the decision, I'm just going to date this guy. When you make that guy your de facto boyfriend, whether you want to or not, because you're not connecting with other guys, you're going to start demanding energetically and even in specifics of communication and specifics of things you want from him, what a boyfriend would do, but he's not your boyfriend. So when this happens subconsciously, he starts feeling a feeling of neediness from you. And what's the alternative to that? Well, that you take the time to continue connecting with more men and until you define mutually that you're compatible, there's emotional connection, there's a sense of well-being, there's chemistry, all the things that need to happen for exclusivity, that you don't just make the guy without telling him the solution to your man dilemma. In essence, if you want to clarify this, make it simpler is, is what you're doing right now, consciously or subconsciously, making work hard for it in a way that's unnecessary or adding drama to his life. Hope you find this helpful and useful. If you do, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because that's how I get a chance to share my work with more women. If you click like and subscribe, and if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.